In Liberia, former Chief Justice Gloria Mususcat has been released from jail where she has been serving a life sentence for the death of her foster daughter at the justice's home. The Liberian Supreme Court overturned the life sentence on Wednesday because of what it calls insufficient evidence to link Justice Cat and her relatives to the crime. In an exclusive interview with VOA, Justice Mususcat says she will use her experience in jail to fight for prison and judicial reforms, including a code of conduct with penalties for police and prosecutors. She tells me that while she's happy for her freedom, she is also sad that uh, the killer of her niece is still out there. Even though we are free, but we are still sad that the government of Liberia refused to look for the killer. They were just bent on us. They had scientific evidence that we were not the killer, but they refused to look for the killer. So it's sad. We're happy. We're grateful to God. We glorify him and all of that, that we have our freedom once again. But one of us is not here, and her killer is still out there. So that's the sadness. Do you think that is something you would like to pursue? Yeah, it's something that I will ask the government to do, because they have the statutory mandate. The government of Liberia has a responsibility for public safety, protect and defend life and property. And one of his uh, citizens died in 2023, was killed gruesomely. And even though we have new personnel running the country, but it is still a responsibility of the government of Liberia, especially the executive branch, as an institution. So we make that request for them to, to really investigate this matter. Justice Scott, uh, there's some who are saying that uh, you got preferential uh-huh. treatment. What's your reaction? To be put in prison, to have no privacy. What makes it preferential? You're in a bathroom, anybody can come there. you bought naked. you mean using a commode, anybody can open the door. So where is the preferential treatment? As a lawyer, I was presented to be a part of my legal team, which is a right under the Constitution to counsel of your choice. So where is the preferential treatment? I might be prejudicial in my answer, but I was tortured that you didn't commit a crime and they knew they had all recent scientific evidence to know you didn't commit a crime. And they do this. They didn't even give us a chance to move our beloved cello. I really want to see says that I have preferential treatment. That person, they have to be a narcissistic person. They have a narcissistic personality. What other cruel treatment they wanted? Especially when the Constitution says that I'm, I'm presumed innocent until proven guilty. And all my dignities were removed from me. Then you say I have preferential treatment. When you say they would not get away with it, uh, Justice Scott, what, what are you going to go to court to seek redress again? Chapter 3 of our Constitution, the Constitution of the Republic of Liberia, gave me rights. Look, Mr. Bottis, this has to stop. This has to stop. People in authority, and you just violate people's rights, and you just go sit in the corner and suck your thumb, or you just grieve. This has to stop. This evil has to stop. So it sounds to me that something that's going to come out of your imprisonment is a judicial or prison reform. Oh, yeah. They got physical infrastructural problems, even administrative problems in the Bureau of Correction, in the Ministry of Justice. The sanitation of the, the prison, the whole structure, the building leaking everywhere. Can you imagine you, you living and there's a bug sucking your blood? There's a need for reform. And I'm saying it again, there's a need for a code of conduct for the police, code of conduct with penalties for prosecutors. I keep seeing it. I'm not being arrogant, but people know my name. And if this can happen to me, can you imagine what happened to poor Liberians all over the country, languishing in jail that today for something they didn't do? Gloria Mususcat is the former Chief Justice of Liberia. She was speaking with us from the Liberian capital. President Museveni on Tuesday attended the official launch of Lieutenant Honorable Raya Odinga's candidacy for the African Union Commission chairmanship at the State House, Nairobi.
The event was hosted by Kenya's President William Ruto. In his address, President Museveni reflected on his extensive involvement in African struggles since the 1960s, emphasizing the critical need to accurate diagnosis in political management to address the continent's challenges. He underscored the necessity of patriotism and pan-Africanism for Africa's prosperity, citing historical instances where internal divisions led to the decline of previously successful African initiatives against external threats. Highlighting the essence of leadership, President Museveni stated that the role of African Union Commission chairperson requires vision, conviction, and knowledge. He passionately advocated for a united Africa, asserting that collective strength among leaders is essential for the continent's progress. The president addressed the ongoing issue of poverty in Africa, describing it as a significant barrier since 1965 that has hindered the continent's growth and led to dependency. Expressing his confidence in Raila Odinga, President Museveni remarked, I'm here to support the candidature of Raila Odinga on behalf of Uganda because he is a convinced Pan-Africanist. He emphasized that leadership is not merely about career progression, but is about embodying vision and conviction. On August 20th, 2024, President of Djibouti, Ismail Omar Gerel, sent a message through his Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Mahmoud Ali Yusuf, to President Museveni. Ali Yusuf, who is contesting against Raila Odinga for the African Union seat, met Museveni at State House in Tebe. Gerel's message requested Museveni to endorse Ali Yusuf for the African Union seat. However, Museveni told Kenyans that when he met Al Yusuf, he made it clear to him he would be supporting Odinga. He said, Before I came here, there was a young man from Djibouti who came to tell me he was their candidate. Of course, I greeted him warmly. We took photographs and had a cup of tea. But I told him I was coming here to Kenya to support Raila Odinga because he is the candidate fit for this job. The idea of supporting Raila Odinga was agreed upon between Museveni, Ruto and Odinga during a meeting in Kisozi Farm in central Uganda in February 2024. Raila Odinga would seize disruptive opposition activities in Kenya. In return, he would receive backing from Ruto Museveni and other African leaders for the African Union post. Museveni exploited his position as the mediator of the conflict between Ruto and Odinga by securing a petroleum deal with Kenya. Thank you.